Many of you know that I talk about champion subclasses, especially when comparing between champions in Why No One Plays. Occasionally I would also get comments asking me to make a dedicated video about classes. I thought why not, what better way to start the series off than by talking about the hill who Shinshin's always gonna die on, fighters, also known as bruisers. In just about any video game with the categorization system, there exists what many players like to call the holy trinity of classes, tank, healer, and DPS. Tanks focus on soaking up the brunt of enemy damage and drawing aggro since the rest of their party members are pretty vulnerable and can't take too many hits. Healers, in essence, heal their party members to prevent them, particularly the tank, from being wiped out. They also come with other supportive things such as treating status effects, buffing their party members, or in some cases inflicting debuffs on enemies. Then of course we have DPS, or the main damage dealer, who focuses on doing the bulk of the damage for their team, since tanks and healers obviously don't have that much attack power. In exchange for their offensive capabilities, DPSers are also quite squishy, hence why the tank exists for the team. There may be variants of the trinity of classes in each respective game, but that's standard game conventions for most titles, both PvP and PvE. In League of Legends, there are seven classes, Controller, Fighter, Mage, Marksman, Slayer, Tank, and Specialist, along with the subclasses Enchanter, Catcher, Juggernaut, Diver, Burst, Battle Mage, Artillery, Assassin, Skirmisher, Vanguard, and Warden. As you can see, the game has a bunch of classes, and I plan to cover every one of them eventually. So today, let's discuss Fighters and by extension Juggernauts and Divers. Fighters are sort of a hybrid between DPS and Tanks. They have a good combination of damage and durability, and are almost exclusively melee. Even though they can dish out and take a lot of punishment, that's usually only against other melee types like tanks and assassins. Against ranged classes like mages and marksmen, they can get kited really easily due to their lack of effective range. In other words, they're an excellent choice against assassins or tanks because they can survive the former's burst damage in most cases and have more damage than the latter. The two subclasses making up fighters are divers and juggernauts. In simple terms, juggernauts have a lot more power and defense, but attack slowly and lack mobility, whereas divers have a lot less defense but can move around a lot faster, although perhaps not to the same extent as assassins. Of the two, divers have some of the most popular champions to pick up since they offer the most amount of consistency and reliability in solo queue. Camille, Diana, Elise, Irelia, Elise, and Renekton and such. They've got just enough resilience and self-protection to survive some degree of burst damage and their mobility is usually enough to close the gap on ranged champions, provided they don't have additional self-heal or flash. Thanks to this, you often see divers in top jungle and mid lane. Juggernauts are almost exclusively top laners, and they command a loyal following in spite of occupying only one role. Pretty much every top laner likes to keep at least one or two of them in their back pocket since they're usually easy to play, but can smash people's faces in just as well as divers if they get within range. Aatrox, Darius, Mordekaiser, Set, Udyr, and Volibear to name a few. Juggernauts are basically League's version of the Berserker class you would see in a lot of MMOs. Fighters have a pretty notorious reputation in the game among just about every person who doesn't play them. In fact, over the past 6 months we've seen a mountain of them get slammed with a myriad of nerfs. Camille, Elise, Hecarim, Olaf, Pantheon, Renekton, Aatrox, Darius, Garen, Udyr, Urgot, Yorick, just about everyone spare a few got toned down, as well as their items. I would argue out of all the classes, fighters probably got the most benefit out of Season 11's item reworks, giving us a bunch of super efficient and practical items like Gore Drinker, Stride Breaker, Steric Gauge, and more. To some extent, this reputation isn't unwarranted. I'd be lying if I said it was rare for a bruiser to dive head on into a fight and explode everyone like a big fat raid boss. ADC and mage players remember the terror of getting dove on by an Olaf, Hecarim, or Udyr at full power, and being able to deal literally no damage to them while they tear you to pieces. It seems unfair that these melee carries can do so much damage while being able to face tank all of yours. To a lot of mid and bot laners, fighters are overpowered and imbalanced. On the flip side, players of divers and juggernauts find themselves constantly being shoved into the ground with their champions and items being nerfed time and time again feeling frustrated that their carry potential is always constricted and their agency smothered. Aside from a Shinshin, many fighter mains voice their complaints about how the game is impossible to carry as a fighter because their role is too weak. So who's in the right here, and more importantly, how is it possible for a class of champions to feel both overpowered and useless at the same time by two different people? I personally am a fighter main myself, I know I don't really talk about my own champion pool, but I do enjoy me some Renekton, Pantheon, Darius, Set, and stuff, but I can see where both parties are coming from. There have been a lot of times where I would run down the enemy bot lane and 1v2 as Darius without taking any damage. 
Conversely, there have been times where I got kited into oblivion and felt like there was just nothing I could do against a Kraken Slayer Vayne 3 shotting me with all that true damage. Like all points of contention, it comes down to perspective. There isn't exactly a clear answer for why bruisers constantly get nerfed over and over, however, there is a causality for both. League of Legends is a team-based game in that you have 5 players on both sides that have to work together to destroy the enemy nexus, but it doesn't have the same necessity for classes the way other games do. You can win a game with 5 supports just as you can win a game with a balanced team composition, since it's you versus the enemy team, not so much you versus the nexus. In multiplayer PvE games, each class has to work as a coordinated unit to accomplish an objective, usually against a boss or a dungeon or something. Not only do they start together right from the get-go, but the enemy is, one, the same enemy every time, and two, usually has a series of patterns and attacks that everyone can agree on to counter together. There isn't a carry in those games because every class plays a vital role in sustaining the operation. The DPS cannot function without the tank, who cannot function without the healer, who cannot function without the DPS. In League of Legends solo queue, while it's still a team-based game in concept, every player has to fend for themselves at the beginning of the game. So in essence, it's not one team versus another team, rather 5 individual players versus another 5 individual players with the option that they can work together to get stuff done. And usually they do, because in a lot of cases there is strength and unity. Bruisers are the only class of champions in the game who are capable of taking on every other class. Even though they may struggle with ranged classes like mages and marksmen, they are not without tools to stop them. Divers are able to close the gap very easily on AD carries without needing tanks or supports to do it for them, and most juggernauts have at least some way to catch up to ranged champions, especially now with Stridebreaker. In a way, they don't really have a specific counter aside from, ironically, other bruisers. AD carries get countered by assassins and mages because they either outrange you or burst you faster than you can DPS them down. Mages get countered by assassins and tanks. Assassins for the same reason, and tanks because they can survive burst damage really easily. Fighters don't exactly beat mages and AD carries, but they don't lose to them that much either. Actually no, that's a lie, enchanters hard counter fighters. So basically Lulu, Janna, etc. Anyone with disengage or appeal. Another cause would likely be due to the fact that they're a completely self-sufficient subclass. When people think of power creep, they think of everything doing more damage, everything having more health, more abilities, more effects, etc. But there's a special kind of power creep that also takes place, which I like to call damage creep. As an analogy, I used to play a game called Maple Story, which I assume many of you have as well. Back in the day, when we wanted to take on a bunch of super hard bosses like Zakum or Horntail, we had to get an entire crew of like 30 people together. Bunch of healers to support the squishy DPSers, and tanks to buff the whole party so we don't all get one-shotted. But over the years, the need for dedicated tanks and healers began to dissipate when classes, especially newer ones, started becoming more self-sufficient. So it became clear that there was no particular reason to waste party slots on healers or tanks when we can just go all damage and kill the boss quicker, relying on our own mechanics, potions, and self-buffs to get through the fight. League of Legends is going through that same sort of damage creep. Champions in the game aren't doing more damage per se, but there are more and more solo carry champions being released that don't exactly need anyone's help to do anything. Uh, a good comparison would be Seraphine and Sona. Sona places a great reliance on her teammates to take care of the damage while she does the support, while Seraphine does provide support but she can also do the damage herself. That's why fighters in particular seem so broken relative to other classes, because they basically have the properties of the Holy Trinity. Juggernauts have the durability of a tank, the damage of a DPS, and sustain of a healer. Like Darius, he hits like a mother can face tank a lot of damage, and heals a ton from his Q. Divers may not be quite as bulky as Juggernauts, but they can still take a lot of hits. They have the damage of a DPS, and a lot of them also come with sustain and self-sufficiency that a healer or support would usually be providing. Rengar has no shortage of burst damage, the Bruiser build with Gore Drinker allows him to soak up a ton of burst, and he sustains like Soraka with Battle Roar. That's not to say supports and AD carries as well as other classes are useless, they're still very much needed. But in solo queue, you've probably ran into a team composition that consisted of perhaps Wukong top, Bully Bear jungle, Diana mid, and they just bulldoze all over your carries because how the hell is Nami supposed to peel her poor Ezreal against those three? Bruisers are considered overpowered if we look at their individual capabilities. They're the one class that can duel just about everyone, except maybe skirmishers. But in fairness, skirmishers literally are the 1v1 subclass. Where they encounter a little difficulty is when we transition to team fights. All fighters, whether juggernauts or divers, are short-range combatants with really good DPS. The bulk of damage from divers is front-loaded, which means they have some more bursty elements. You think of Renekton, Vi, Diana, Elise, 
They can still output some respectable damage in an extended fight, but usually their impact is decided from their initial assault. The caveat is that most divers are purely single target. Even if they may have AoE damage in their kit, at best they can only really take down one person at a time. Hecarim can do a lot of teamfight damage with his Q and ultimate, but his E is single target. Same with Camille, Rek'Sai, etc. Juggernauts, on the other hand, have way better sustained damage than divers, and pretty much all of them, Sans, Nasus, Trundle, and Dr. Mundo, have tons of AoE in their kit. In exchange, they generally take a very long time to output said damage. Neither subclass is relatively good in teamfights for this very reason. Even though you think their explosive power and raid boss status makes them perfect for fighting 5v5, it's a lot harder to exert your pressure when you're trying to break through 3, 4, or 5 people instead of just 1 or 2. In single close quarters combat, AD carries and mages stand absolutely no chance against bruisers. But what if Yumi is attached to them? What if there's a giant scion blocking your path so you can't get to the backline as a juggernaut? What if they have a Janna who can peel your engage off of her carries and then you're completely useless for a few seconds? The reason assassins can burst down squishies, even if they're right next to their support, is because they do it so fast it's almost impossible to react to. But juggernauts and divers are extremely predictable. If they can't flash over a wall, they have to run right towards you. And even then, their combos are marginally slower. When you're head-on in a 5v5, you have to account for all the splash damage, crowd control, dashes, and whatnot flying around on both sides that can make it much harder for you to lock onto a single target. It's easy to take down a squishy target if it's just them and at most one other person. But when they're surrounded by their entire team, odds are you're forced to play front to back to get to them. But even though fighters are great at taking down tanks, they still take a long time to do so. It's not like a Darius can two-shot an Ornn even with true damage. He still needs time to get his stacks and Ornn does have a lot of health. As a mage or marksman, it's much easier to survive a diver's assault when you have your whole team backing you up. And it's much, much easier to kite a juggernaut when they're being perma-slowed by all the attacks going around and you have some buffer between them and you. One other thing, since fighters are melee, they usually smack dab in the middle of the enemy team right next to their tanks which also means they're the first ones to get focused down. Divers in particular have an all-or-nothing playstyle. Once Jarvan, Warwick, and Diana burn their engage, their only hope for escape is if they win the fight, because aside from that, you're almost certainly dead. Technically speaking, that is your job as a fighter, to soak up as much pressure and to do as much damage as humanly possible until you fall. But that also entails trusting your teammates to finish the job after the enemy team just blew all their resources to take you down. And, you know, in solo queue, you can't really trust anyone. Basically, it's a paradox. You're simultaneously the most self-sufficient class, which is why everyone thinks you're the most broken characters in the game, but you just barely lack the necessary tools to solo carry games the way skirmishers and mages can. That's why fighter mains think it's impossible to solo carry, and why mages and AD carries are just better at everything, yet those mages and AD carries also think fighters are impossible to beat. So there you have it, since this is the first episode I'd greatly appreciate some constructive feedback. Do you think this was an insightful look on bruises or are you completely confused as to the point of the video? Let me know in the comments. If you like it, I'll continue on with assassins, mages, marksmen, tanks, and controllers. If you don't, then I'll figure something else to make. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subbing to the channel. Also, check out the description down below for links to my Discord and social media, as well as a playlist containing all my discussion videos if you'd like to watch more. But that's it for today, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.